Class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we're discussing some huge news coming out of the NHL, which pertain to hopefully the conclusion to the Evander Kane saga. So, so for those who may have been living under a rock this past off season, all the way back in July, Evander Kane's now estranged wife came out with allegations that Kane had been gambling on NHL games and even on Sharks games, which may have meant that he could have been, you know, intentionally trying to lose games that he himself were participating in. And so the NHL began an investigation, and after about a month's time, the NHL concluded that those uh, allegations had no real truth behind them, at least as far as the NHL was concerned. However, the day that that was announced his estranged wife once again came up with even more allegations that he had sexually assaulted her during their previous marriage. And as such, the NHL opened up once again a new investigation. And as the second investigation was ongoing, a third set of allegations were brought against Evander Kane that he had violated the NHL COVID protocol rules by sort of, I guess, forging his own uh, vaccination card that said he was vaccinated even though he actually wasn't. And so finally today we got a conclusion to both of these ongoing investigations. When it comes to the sexual assault allegations brought by his estranged wife, the NHL has concluded that those allegations cannot be substantiated and so no further comment will be made on those and there will no be there will be no penalty against Evander Kane in that regard. However, when it comes to the COVID violation, the NHL has concluded that that indeed did occur and as such Kane has been suspended 21 NHL games for this season and will only be eligible to return to the Sharks roster by the end of November, which would normally be, you know, not great news for the Sharks, but at the very least, he wouldn't be suspended for that long of a period of time. However, a lot of Sharks fans have kind of had their opinions on Evander Kane flipped. During last season, Kane seemed to be one of the best, if not the best player on the Sharks roster. And so when the rumors began to start that Evander Kane was an issue for the San Jose Sharks in their locker room, a lot of Sharks fans didn't really put a lot of faith into that rumor because it was coming from a journalist who wasn't actually connected to the Sharks organization all that closely. However, once these allegations of gambling really began to pop out, it seemed as though that a lot of the Sharks journalists actually began to further add to those rumors that Evander Kane indeed was an issue in the Sharks locker room. And so with all of these allegations coming up, a lot of these Sharks fans completely did the 180 on their opinion of Evander Kane, where previously they absolutely wanted Kane to still be on the Sharks roster. At this point, it seems as though a lot of people would be much happier if he did not return to the Sharks roster, even if on purely on the ice, he would likely be a big benefit for the San Jose Sharks. And I can't say I necessarily disagree with them. Now, I'm not going to make any sort of bold claims that clearly the Sharks locker room is in a much better position because I have no idea how it really was when Kane was on the team. And I have no idea how it really is currently with Kane currently not on on the roster. So I can't make any sort of claim like that. And so while it is technically true that Kane would be better for the on-ice product for the San Jose Sharks, I find that the Sharks not playing this big name player allows a lot of the younger players to really flourish in the lineup. As we just saw with the first Sharks game of the season. Dahlin looked quite good on that first line of Eklund, maybe not looking that great on the second line, but is definitely beginning to make a name for himself at the NHL level. And when you toss in Evander Kane, who would obviously fill in a spot in the top six, suddenly you're having to move down an Eklund or you're having to move down a Jonathan Dahlin, which maybe by the time the end of November rolls around might be an actual sort of good thing to happen but currently it is not looking really like a good thing so even at the time where Evander Kane is eligible to return to the roster do I think he should actually be brought back in and put into the lineup well I'm not really sure what is interesting is actually Evander Kane's response to this suspension where he obviously goes with the usual PR talk of how he regrets his decision and it was a one-time mistake and things like that that any player in his situation would say but the thing that concludes his statement 
is that he says that once that suspension is over, he looks forward to returning to the ice and making an impact for the San Jose Sharks. So he clearly fully expects to be back in the lineup once his suspension concludes. And I don't know if that's just him having that confidence that that's going to happen, or if maybe someone in the Sharks organization told him that that indeed is going to happen once the suspension is over. I'm not entirely sure, but it is quite telling that he would add that at the end of his statement. And so if the Sharks do end up sitting him out, you know, it's not necessarily the end of the world because they don't necessarily need that seven million dollars of cap space uh, because right now there's not really much moves that can be made during the season however Evander Kane does still have three other years left past this one on this contract so if you're not going to play Evander Kane for the rest of this season you almost certainly wouldn't play him in the following year and so your only option is to try and maybe trade him which would be insanely difficult at this point or to try and buy him out but that would be very costly for the San Jose Sharks a seven million dollar deal that has three years left. I mean, we know how costly already that the Martin Jones buyout was and with three years left. And for that one, it was actually at a lower money amount. So it's going to be even worse with Evander Kane. There would be a ton of dead cap space for the San Jose Sharks, which would make things very hard to maneuver over these next few years. So it is definitely a very tough situation that Evander Kane has put the San Jose Sharks in. And I don't really know what the plan forward here is. Class dismissed.